Welcome calculus e-learners. Today we're going to be talking about the chain rule um, and we've we've looked at this before but it's been a while and it can get really crazy but we're going to keep it uh, relatively tame here for you. So back on our derivative rule sheet which you're definitely going to want to have this printed out or access to this. Um, it's available on the derivatives rule page of our website. We jump down, we've been through all of these rules till here, and here is chain rule. And chain rule occurs when we have something like, let's say, 3x squared minus 2x to the seventh, and we want to find the derivative of that. And that's where we have an inside function that takes x takes things, squares them, multiplies them by 3, and subtracts 2 times the thing. And then we have an outside function that takes things, whatever's behind my pen here, and raises it to the seventh. So as you can see, we have an inside function, which I'm going to refer to as the baby function. And we have an outside function right here, which I'm going to refer to, that's g. h is the inside function, the baby function. g is the mama function carrying the baby. So when we want to find the derivative of this thing, or of f, what we do is we take the outside derivative, we treat the mama function, so the derivative of this, we treat the mama function, and the mama function is just something, we can't see the baby, something to the seventh, so it's seven something to the sixth. We leave the baby function alone for the time being, and then when the baby's born, we treat the baby function, and the, so we need the derivative of the baby, and that is 6x minus 2. And then cleaning up, if you want, you could distribute maybe that 7 into here, but maybe it's best just to leave it in this factored form. In fact, you could even factor a 2 out of here, which would be kind of useful, and get 14, 2 times 7, 3x squared minus 2x to the 6th times factored out of 2, 3x minus 1. And why is that useful? Well, because oftentimes we're, we're charged with figuring out when derivatives are equal to 0. And now I can tell, well, this derivative is definitely equal to 0 at 1 third, and maybe some other places as well, likely. OK, so that's it. Um, if that didn't make a whole lot of sense, believe me, I, I think we're going to be on board um, after we go through our examples. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about some of these rules as well in conjunction with chain rule. So you're going to have the whole, you will have been exposed now to the whole derivative rules worksheet. So we'll come back to this with reference. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. f prime of x equals our outside function is something to the third. Forget about the baby. We can't see the baby yet. So we just treat the mama function. So that would be 3 something to the second. We leave the baby alone. 3x to the fourth plus 5 times when the baby's born, we treat the baby, we take the derivative of the baby. So that's the derivative of this inside function is 12 x to the third. So final answer, 3 times 12, 36 x to the third times quantity 3 x to the fourth plus 5 squared. And that's it. And we've got three more examples like that. At any time, feel free to pause. I'm going to just power through these, but you may want to try them ahead of time. F prime x is treat the mama. The mama function something to the third. Leave the baby alone. Treat the baby 10x to the fourth derivative of the inside function, and simplify. 30x to the fourth, 2x to the fifth plus 3 squared. So just kind of repetitive and, and getting this kind of, so we can just sit down, see a problem like this, and, and just go right at it. f prime x, 
treat the mama for something to the third, leave the baby alone, treat the baby, the derivative of this, negative 20 x to the fourth, simplify negative 80 x to the fourth, quantity negative 4x to the fifth plus 3 cubed. And now, if you haven't tried one on your own yet, you should be able to do number 4, or you may be able to do number 4, I shouldn't assume that, you may be able to do number 4 in uh, 20 seconds or so. Give it a shot. F prime x is treat the mama, leave the baby alone, treat the baby. The derivative of 5x plus 2, 5. Simplify 25 times quantity 5x plus 2 to the fourth. Okay, now for number 5 for this next set, I'm going to go ahead and put this parentheses around here just to kind of emphasize our baby function is 5x to the fourth. Our mama function is cosine. We come back here and we take a look. The derivative of cosine, holy smokes, I'm going to have to get that fixed. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. So I will have that fixed. If you're going to print this sheet out, you've probably it probably already says negative sine of x on yours. Okay. So anyway, cosine's derivative is the opposite of sine. Um, you will you would probably over time just naturally you'll do this so much you'll just naturally memorize that. But there are some it is worth taking a look. There are some similarities between sine and cosine's derivative, tangent and cotangent's derivatives, secant and cosecant's derivatives. There are definitely some similarities. It looks like the rest of these are correct right now. So anyway, cosine's derivative is negative sine. So we get negative sine of, leave the baby alone, 5x to the fourth, and then treat the baby. So this is outside of the sine function. So we get 20x to the third, f prime of x equals. So simplify, maybe negative 20x to the third, sine of 5 x to the fourth. Okay. Cotangent. We need to know what cotangent's derivative is. Cotangent's derivative. Negative cosecant squared. So we treat the baby. Cotangent's derivative is negative cosecant squared of. Did I say treat the baby? We treat the mama function. Leave the baby alone, 3x to the fourth. Treat the baby, find the derivative of this, 12x cubed. Final answer, negative 12x cubed cosecant squared of 3x to the fourth. And I would think you'd be okay with secant. Although, you know what, secant has a little bit of a twist to it. The derivative of secant of x is secant of x tangent of x. So we'll go through that one before we have you try number 8 on your own. So derivative of secant is secant tangent. So we treat the mama, leave the baby alone. And then treat the baby, so that is just 10x to the fourth. And we might clean that up by putting the 10x to the fourth first. And if you get disciplined with it, you can see how we could have done that in step one. Okay, so for sine, Sines, these all have a kind of a similar feel to them. Sine's derivative is plain old cosine. So go ahead and try 8.
sine's derivative is cosine. So when we treat the mama, we get cosine, leave the baby alone, 4x cubed. Treat the baby, find the derivative of this, which normally I've been attaching back here, but here's what I talked about on the previous problem. We can anticipate that. The derivative of the inside function is 12x to the second. And there we have it. Okay, so far so good. Um, this is called chain rule, and we've been looking at chains that are kind of like this. We had a, a link of a chain and another link of a chain. But chain rule implies that maybe we have multiple links, and that's what's going on on number nine. Here's where it starts to get fun. I can't see the baby. So I'm just going to treat the mama, f prime x, sine's derivative is cosine, leave the baby alone. And now I need to treat the baby, but the baby has a baby. So the derivative of this is just like, in fact, it's exactly number 8 now. I now have to find the derivative of this. Forget about the mama now. We're done. She's been treated. So we need the derivative of sine, the outside function here, is cosine of, leave that baby alone, and then treat that baby 12x squared. So we end up with a 12x squared a cosine of sine of 4x cubed times cosine of 4x cubed. Ooh, there's a lot going on there. Cosine, cosine, 2x to the fifth. As hopefully you recall, cosine's derivative is negative sine. So can't see the baby, just treat the mama. F prime x is the opposite of sine, leave the baby alone. Treat the baby, but that's another chain. We have an inside and outside function cosine inside 2x to the fifth. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. I'm going to put a times here. Negative sine. Leave that baby alone. And now treat that baby. 10x to the fourth. So what do we end up with? A negative, a negative, positive. 10x to the fourth. We've got a cosine of 2x to the fifth. That's wrong. Sorry, negative, negative, positive. We've got a 10x to the fourth. Then we've got a big mess here. Sine of cosine 2x to the fifth. And then we still have another sine of 2x to the fifth. All right, we'll get a little bit more practice on those when we take a look at the next page. So number 11, at any point, feel free to try these on your own. Work ahead, because we've only got a couple more like these. They're very, very similar to one another. f prime x equals treat. Actually, the grandmother here. We get cosine of, leave the rest alone. Now we've peeled that little layer away. So we could, could in some ways say chain rule is like onions or like ogres. There's layers. We peel this outside layer away. And now we peel the outside layer away from here. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Leave that baby alone, 4x to the fifth. So we peeled this layer away, and now we're just left with this, times 20x to the fourth. 
So what do we have? We have a single negative. We have a little polynomic factor, 20x to the fourth. We've got this first mess, cosine of cosine of 4x to the fifth, and then a sine of 4x to the fifth. And now, if you haven't tried one of these yet, uh, pause the video and try number 12. F prime is treat the baby, negative cosine of. I said it again, treat the mama, negative sine of. If I was proud, I'd start this video over after that debacle. Derivative cosine, negative sine. Leave the baby alone. Treat the baby. New mama function. Derivative sine, cosine, leave that baby alone. 2x squared, treat that baby, 4x. Final answer, negative 4x sine of sine of 2x squared cosine of 2x squared. All right, so there we go. Now we get into some natural logs. Natural logs are kind of interesting. Here we have ln of x is simply just 1 on x. And so we may think that ln of this would be 1 on this, but it is not ultimately that. What if we think of this way? Oh, this is a chain rule still. So f prime of x is treat the mama, the derivative of ln of something is 1 on that thing. So this is 1 on, leave the baby alone, now treat the baby. The derivative of the baby function is 16x to the third, and now we can do some reducing. And we get 16 divided by 4, 4, x cubed cancels three of those on x. And we've got a few of these LNs to be taking a look at. Um, looks like we only have one of these e to this, but that's all right. I think, I think it's, it should be more evenly split. But uh, these kind of go in the same section. So LN 4x to the seventh. You could probably make a reasonable prediction on this one right here, but let's go ahead and we'll take a look at this thing. F prime of x, the derivative of LN, the mama function is 1 on the baby times derivative of the baby, which is 28 x to the sixth, and we get 28 divided by 4, 7, x to the sixth reduces this to x to the first. Okay, and ln x to the seventh be interesting to compare how 14 and 15 end up being alike. So here we've got the mama function ln, so the derivative of ln is 1 on, leave the baby alone, treat the baby, and we get 7x to the 6th, so we end up with 7 x to the 6th, x to the 7th reduces to just x, and that is somewhat of a surprise that we end up with exactly the same thing as we did on the previous, but it is correct. Probably not a bad time just to have you try to take a guess at what this one is, if you can see some patterns developing here, and then we'll go ahead and go through the process. F prime of x equals treat the mama, 1 on, leave the baby alone, 3x to the 6th, times 
treat the baby, 18x to the fifth, 18 and 3 reduced to 6, 5x's reduced to 6x's to just a single x. And now let's jump to 18. I think you ought to be able to, to play scientist here and know what the answer to this one is. And I'll go through it. F prime X. Treat the mama one on. Leave the baby alone. 3X to the eighth. Treat the baby 24X to the seventh. 24 divided by 3. 8. 7X is reduced. 8, 8X is to just X. Okay. Our favorite derivative rule of all. And this is pretty crazy, but there's reasons behind this that, that you will eventually learn, but not going to learn um, anytime soon in this course, is this. This is one that you might think, like this, maybe this is a misprint, maybe this can't possibly be. But the derivative of e to the x actually is e to the x. So our first thought might be, Oh, well, then the derivative of e to the x, e to the 8x to the 9th, must be e to the 8x to the 9th, but that is incorrect because that is a baby function. So f prime, treat the mama, the derivative of e to the is e to the. But now we need to treat the baby, so times 72x to the 8th. So we end up with 72x to the 8th, e to the 8th, x to the 9th. So just some little mechanical trickery and um, I'll probably do a video for this, but it's probably only going to be about half the problems. There's a lot of repetition here. I don't want you just taking notes twice. So let me know if I can help with that.